okay and now let's add here our helper function called get neighbors so having the distances this is very simple right we just need to sort it according to the distance you can use the python function called sorted We need to provide a key, which is the function that is going to be applied in order to calculate the value that is going to be used for the sorting process. In our case, it's the second coordinate. Re recall that th there is a tuple in the distances list. The first one is the ID and the second is the distance. So this is why we need to sort according to the second component. This is why here we call it X1. And the reverse equals false to get the ones with the smallest distance first. And we just are going to return a NumPy array. With the indexes. So it's going to be this. In A, we are sorting all the distances but we again are, are having pairs of index and distance. So now, given that A is already sorted, we need to just abstract the first K, but we only need the index. So this is why we're using the very first component of each element in A. In order to test these two functions, we need to build a testing set. What it means is like we are going to leave some of the cases of our database out of the set of potential neighbors and we are going to try to classify those cases so if we divide our database into training set and testing set we are going to iterate over the testing case attempt to classify each of those cases by searching for the nearest neighbors only in the training set Later, we are going to see in a future video more complex ways to divide our database into training and test cases, like a k-fold cross validation or leave one out cross validation. But for now, we are just going to do what is called holdout, in where we are going to extract randomly one percentage of the database and use it as testing cases. So we are going to define here the percent of cases that are going to belong to the test set, let's say 20%. So let's go into iterate. Let's for now use this. Even though we can go over the unique um, values of the class column, we always need to check if those uh, values are integers. So we're going to be inserting here the testing rows. So here we're going to choose for First for one class and then for the other, right? A random number of rows. Here we are selecting only the cases that belong to this class. So we get a random set there. Um, just from the index, let's say, because we don't need the whole data point. And how much we gonna get this amount. We need to cast it to integer in order to be accepted by the choice function um, times the length of the data, right? So if we had 1000 cases in our database, we are going to get 200 rows for testing purposes. So our testing data frame, first we start by copying the original data frame, and now we are going to index this with the indexes we just selected 
from the previous iteration. Okay, recall that from here we just got the indexes and now we are dropping the rest. And in for the train cases are going to be all the remaining rows. So basically we are dropping um, the test rows. We need to say that axis equals to zero for pandas to understand that we are dropping rows, right? So let's print, for example, So here we are printing the number of positive cases in um, the data frame. So are the cases that belong to class one. Okay, so we can do the same for the ones that belong to class zero. we can see that we have the same amount of cases because per class we were sampling this 20%. That's very important. This is called stratified sample because we don't want to get a random set of rows from the original database without paying attention to the class because we need to make sure we select the same amount of cases per each of the classes in order to keep the balance in the testing set. If we had from the original database 300 points belonging to class one and 700 points belonging to class zero, that means that the training set is unbalanced. So we need to keep the same proportion in our testing case to make sure that the way we test the model is closer to the reality. So we need to go and pick 20% of rows out of 300 positive case and 20% of rows out of 700 positive case. And we're going to keep the same proportions in the testing set. So let's now predict. So here we are iterating over the rows and is, we are getting the index and the row. So the prediction is going to be our model. We need to pass the training data, the class name and K, let's say three for now. And let's, let's append the predictions. We just need the ID and the predicted class. Now we can take a look at the predictions. So let's visualize our predictions and compare them with the real values of the class. Unless I'm going to need that. So let's say we want a range. We are going to iterate over different pairs of variables. So we're going to compare, um, we don't want to compare the same variable, right? So let's use this. We just want to do a couple of scatter plots. So here I'm providing with the necessary parameters. Again, the HUE is the class name, which is going to be used to set the color of the plot. For the marker, I'm going to use 
circles in this first scatter. I'm gonna explain why. And the data here is gonna be the test VF. So here I'm pl I'm creating the a scatter plot with the testing data points and using colors for the real value of the class for the for the ground truth. But now I'm gonna use a different marker. But instead of plotting the class, I'm gonna plot the prediction. Okay. So here. And this is p of one because it's the second component in every pair that we are saving in the predictions list. I'm gonna use crosses for the predictions and I'm gonna use uh, a bigger size, it's gonna be 100. And here we, we show each of the scatter plot. Here we go. So you can see that here I'm plotting different pairs of variables. In crosses are the predictions, in circles the testing points, and the colors are the ground truth value of the class. Right? So for example, in this plot in particular, we can see that in the cases in where we have an orange cross and a blue circle means that it's a wrong prediction. So here are a few wrong predictions, but in most of the cases we have the correct predictions. Right? In, in, in other words, with the cross color matches the circle color, right? Later in other videos, we are going to see how to provide with concrete measurements about the performance of the classifier. In particular, we are going to define what is precision and recall and build the confusion matrix, right? But for now, let's just use this visualization to have an understanding of how the classifier it is performing. Again, it is natural to see that in the, in the areas where we have overlap between training cases of different classes, we are going to have wrong predictions because this classifier is based in the class of the neighbors. And these areas are with neighborhoods that sometimes confuse one class and another.